Hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about this topic. Uh, my name is Henrik Eriksson. I'm a chief architect at the region Ostergotland. Uh, before we dig into the topic of today, I'm going to talk a little bit what is region Ostergotland. Um, before we was named a county council, now we are a region together with uh, 13 municipalities. We are the fourth most pop, uh, biggest region in Sweden, approximately 400,000 citizens. Um, our responsibilities are mainly uh, public transportation, uh, deliver healthcare, obviously, and also your urban development and education, and uh, research uh, for healthcare. Uh, we are governed a uh, political and democratically uh, organization. Uh, the highest decision maker. Uh, we are consist by 101 elected officials. Now to the topic. Um, today we are enforced by the law to deliver new functionality. In this case to digitally sign data and for the mine primary reasons legal agreements and EHR electronic health records and for social care uh, so what did we need to do this obviously we needed a service that can meet our demands according to the law so we need uh, a service that can work with our legacy system, but also in a mobile world. So what we did, first, uh, we signed a contract with a partner who offered the service for digital signing. We could build our own service, but we didn't have that time. So we look out there and find a partner and can deliver this service for us. And uh, we made the system in hand be able to use this API. And then we were done. Everything <laughs> perfect. But now the problem arose because the system was directly attached to this service. And we couldn't control the security. We couldn't trace anything. And we had to leave out our secrets to the to the producer of the service. Uh, we couldn't distribute cost, and we have no documentation. It was up to the uh, developer of the system to interpret the service, which broke one time when we changed the backend. So, the problem was no traceability, no security, uh, and we needed to take control over this API fast because we have a line of systems that are uh, want to be connected to this to this service so instead of one production key and give it to the uh, producer of the service we give them one unique key for every uh, for every service instead so we were the one only uh, who have the production key and, and what we did was that we used the API gateway for this so to make it possible. And along came the ability for trend monitoring, uh, handle the cost over for the different systems, and manage the whole, whole security around it. So the design goal that we had taken was to enforce our demands for accessing this service instead of just connecting them directly to the API. And the result of doing this, we find out a lot of things, not just the obvious ones, that we weren't able to do. Uh, a lot of people have talked about the open API documentation format. We also did that finding 
instead of interpret the API documentation written in PDF, we gave them a Swagger file instead. And there was no direct uh, in, uh, lack for interpretation. We can generate code in, uh, from this documentation instead of letting the service developer interpret uh, this service. So it came, became abstract. I mean, they didn't know what language or uh, code we used in the background. We designed the API instead, according to our standard. And we were able to deliver in a more easy package way. And also uh, uh, generate code from it and clients. And they can work with the API without having the proper API keys to actu actually uh, talk to the backend. We can use mock data without they actually use our API. That was one finding that we did. And the security, I mean, when should this be available? According to the SLA, or is business hour, or is it around the clock? How many requests per second are we allowed to use? We can control everything around the clock, and even trace the usage, not over, just over time, but uh, during the night, during the week, and the payload on, of the infrastructure. Before, we, ha we, were, we were blind to this. Traceability, obviously. Who signed and which uh, access control mechanisms were used? Are we conform with uh, our reg regulations and law by doing this? Yes. We can take control over every step of using this service. And confidentiality. We, instead of the API dictates the demands for accessing it, we could dictate uh, the rules for accessing the API ourselves. Even uh, which way of authentication is used uh, and which role you have uh, do you need for making these service calls. And according to the law, this is our responsibility in the public sector as a healthcare provider. It's our infrastructure. We cannot uh, put this responsibility uh, to a service delivery partner. We cannot do that. So, for you, everybody I heard swagger nowadays, I think, <laughs> but uh, cannot... Uh, oh. Must promote it also. Uh, a lot of tools, I mean, is, is out there to help you design the API based on this uh, standard. Uh, and for those who haven't attended the last sessions, uh, this is an example of how Swagger can uh, look like where the actual API is defined to the left and is self-documented to the right. Um, so, conclusion. From our point, I mean, we are at the beginning of this journey to be able to deliver an API platform. This is our first API. We are uh, young in this journey, and this is our first step towards delivering more service in a uh, conformed way, just not to the legacy world, but also to the mobile world. You need control the security all the way, and it needs to be implemented for every developer, otherwise it gets misinterpreted, and the server will break, or the, or the application or the client will break. You must be able to manage, manage everything, uh, trend usage, performance, cost, everything. And you need to predict them all. Oh, sorry. And that was what I had to say about this topic. It, our first API towards a complete API platform. Excellent.